Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to dedicate that song to a, um, a longtime internet friend. His name is Larry, who actually made the trip up here uh, from L.A. this week uh, to do some recording for the first time. Um, it's pretty cool. He was a longtime fan of the concert series and the broadcast. And um, he said it was on his bucket list mm -hmm. to come and record at Piano Haven. Um, and I was really touched, and he said that was his favorite song. So, Larry, in L.A., I know you're watching that one. It was for you, buddy. Um, the song is called Face to Face, and I wrote that when I was on vacation in L.A., ironically. And I was sitting with my digital t uh, piano on the top floor of a hotel right on Ventura Beach, and I was playing out to the sunset. It was gorgeous. I was just embracing the moment, and off in the distance, I saw a seagull flying around. And uh, within a space of about 15 minutes, that same seagull ended up landing right on the rail of my little patio that I was playing at. And um, I uh, serenaded him for about 20 minutes and uh, wrote that song in that whole process. Um, nature's a huge inspiration for me. Um, so face to face, we were right there. Uh, not face to beak, face to face. <laughs> but, um, and, um, Anyway, welcome all. Uh, this is a, a special concert for me. Um, I've got uh, two longtime internet friends here, and um, uh, two of what I really believe are, are two of the most absolutely fabulous composers. They both made the trip all the way from Boston just to be here tonight. Um, really touched um, that Doug and Gary um, are so generous in coming out here and spending the week, and we're having a blast. And uh, Gary got off the, the plane last night and brought this sunshine with him, so uh, so we can thank him for that. We appreciate that. All right, Gary. Woo. Um, so I'm just gonna be a, this is gonna be a blast. I'm really happy, really happy tonight. Um, Want to welcome the internet audience. For those of you who haven't been here before, we broadcast these concerts um, through the Piano Haven website online. Typically, get hundreds of viewers tuning in, so it's uh, it's a real treat to be able to do this. That's a little blue camera hanging out right over the. Uh, right off the wall there on, the, on the, my crafty yardstick. <laughs> and I um, just want to welcome the internet audience. I know we had uh, quite a few people email say they were going to be watching. So uh, welcome them. Welcome everybody. It's really neat in these days and times to be able to share an experience like this, um, not only with you guys here in such a, a wonderful, intimate setting, um, but people, I know there's people in Europe and the Eastern Bloc that get up in the middle of the night to tune in and actually watch these lives. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to play a, another song here. This is... Uh, a song that was inspired when a really good friend, his name is John Thomas, he's a wonderful composer, he was here and he uh, was recording a new album that he had written with the inspiration, well he was commissioned by a foundation called Now I Sleep. If you're not, not familiar, it's a wonderful foundation that helps provide um, counseling and support to families who've lost unborn or newborn children. Mm -hmm. So what he did is he went around, was commissioned by this wonderful group and he visited 12 families and got to know them and understand their story and he wrote each of them a special song um, and he named the album Now I Sleep and he was here recording and I was just so touched by his music and his um, his passion and his mission um, that I, I wrote a song while he was here just you know out of compassion um, and this is on my CD uh, my latest CD Into the Wind this is called I Hear Your Cry
it's a beautiful album, John. I did. If anybody wants to check it out, it's johnalbertthomas.com. An absolutely gorgeous, intimate, emotional album. And you know what? It's not depressing. There's beauty in it. It really is. There's beauty in it. There's healing. There's recovery. Um, there's love. There's peace. There's passion. I'm going to do one more song for you. And um, what am I going to do? I'll play a song for Del. My man, Del. Mm -hmm. Del comes here, flies in here from Las Vegas for a lot of these concerts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard him play this on my piano one night. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, I'm going to play it right back for him. Uh, this is for my Destined album. Um, this is called Always With You. I wrote that song many years ago, and um, I would, at the time I was playing tons of weddings, like 50 or 60 weddings a year. I still do weddings, not nearly as many, because um, my interests have shifted. <laughs> but uh, you wedding guys, piano players, will understand that one, won't you? But um, I was always so touched that so many of the brides and grooms that I would play for would choose my original music for their ceremony. 
instead of Pachelbel's Cannon, or Here Comes the Bride, or The Bridal March. <laughs> um, and that was a popular piece I really had written. Um, I actually wrote that um, during a wedding reception, and I had been right up. They put the piano right up on the, on the uh, altar, and like the bride and groom were like literally right there. Um, and they picked one of my pieces, and I was just so touched to, to be there that during the reception, I actually wrote most of that piece. Just, I was, it was just, and I named Always With You. It's a wedding song, so. Our next performer, um, all the way from Boston, Massachusetts. We have double Boston. Time. Actually, he's not from Boston. He's from Cape Cod. Cape Cod, I'm sorry. That's, that's like a bad thing to say, isn't it, too, if you're from Cape Cod to say you're from Boston. I'm busted. Um, I've known Gary for years. Um, we go to, I go to a convention every January and get to meet him. He's in the music and in the piano industry, and he's very established. We go to a music convention. We met down there. Um, gotten to hang with him a bunch of times. Um, actually played a little bit live with him once down in L.A. Um, I love his music. I love his talent. I love his emotion. Um, um, he's one of the neatest, happiest, uh, realest people that I know. So um, I'm really honored that he came all the way here to do this. It's really touching. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Gary Girard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes, I am the person that brought the sun, <laughs> as Joe mentioned. Actually, I heard a lot that Seattle area is always gray. This is my first time here. I don't believe anything they say. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, for right now, I don't believe it. Um, so my first piece I'm going to play um, is kind of a risk. Uh, I'm just very thankful to be here. Um, I'm thankful to, you know, for example, Ron drove quite a ways to be here with us tonight. I know many of you have driven quite a ways to be here and for the Internet audience to be uh, spending some time with us here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play an improvisational piece. And um, sometimes it's a risk because you don't know where it's going to go. Uh, but I think this will end out pretty good because it's been a good day so far. And um, I'm just going to call this thankful because I'm very thankful to be here with you. And uh, we'll see where this goes. Thank you. So that was, I guess we're going to call that thankful. I'm very thankful to be here. Um, so my albums, I have two albums out. They're both called The Naked Piano. And um, I often get chuckles on that. But the reason being, and obviously there's a lot of you I've spoken to even tonight that play the piano or love the piano or maybe played as a child. 
Maybe some of the internet audience has, uh, plays piano, but certainly we all have a fascination with the piano. And why is that? And I've always loved the piano since I was a little boy. This the piano's been around about 300 years, relatively unchanged. It's, it's timeless. There's something about the piano that's timeless. And if you think about iPhones, iPads, all this stuff that comes and goes, all this technology comes and goes, what else has stood the test of time, 300 years, and we're still enjoying it? So The Naked Piano was, um, it's, it's a tribute album, essentially. Uh, it's me exposing myself and sort of the themes of my life on this beautiful instrument. So this next piece I'm going to play, it's titled Viva, and it's the first track on The Naked Piano 1, my first album. And Viva in Italian means to live, or it also means life. And if you've ever heard the phrase, Viva Las Vegas, mm -hmm. it means Las Vegas is really alive. So Viva means more than just um, to live. It means to really to, to, like, crave life. The, you know, and uh, I think of this, when I wrote this piece, it was in very early spring, probably in March, um, Cape Cod. You start seeing, even if there's snow on the ground, you start seeing the daffodils mm -hmm. starting to pop through the snow. And I don't know which flower would be around here, but that first sign of spring, you start seeing these little signs of life. It's just amazing to think about that, that life, like, it, it, want, it wants to live, that nature wants to live. And that's what this piece is about, and it's titled Viva.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm debating on my next piece here. I think what I'm going to play, um, I flew out, out here from Providence, and um, I missed my flight. And it made me think, I got there at 4.30 in the morning. I had a very, very early flight. Fourth, uh, the flight was at 5.50. And I got there at 4.30 to the airport, figuring that's enough time. And um, I missed my flight. I had, got stuck in the TSA line. I was there for an hour, and I, I missed the, they closed the gate by the time I got to the, the plane. But it made me think a little bit about how things have changed, obviously, in the last 12 years. So the next piece I'm going to play, I wrote this in August of 2001. So you'd all know what happened, obviously, after that. And um, I was sitting on my porch. This was just outside of Boston. And on my porch, we had a wind chime. And this piece, when I play it, it kind of takes me back to that time when it was a little bit more innocent, at least for me. Maybe it was partly because I was younger. But I feel, in a, in a way, we've all collectively, we have more fear in our lives in general. And um, when I play this piece, it just remind, it reminds me of being more innocent. We had a more innocent time. And there was a, the, um, the wind chimes sounded like this. And this piece is based on this little theme. So that was the sound of the wind chimes on the porch. And I created a piece. And it's called Trilogy, and it's also on the first album.
you, Gary. Nice. You guys got some chops. <laughs> wow. Cool. Our next performer um, uh, also came from his neck of the woods. Um, he's got two, cur currently got two CDs. His most recent CD, um, Travels, uh, actually won the award. It's a pretty prestigious award in the, in the uh, piano, uh, in the solo piano industry. It was uh, given Best Album of the Year by Whispering Solo Piano Radio. Um, the album is called Travels. It's a double CD set, 39 songs. Um, and it's nothing but absolutely amazing, beautiful, impressive piano. You're going to hear it in a second. Um, first time I heard it, I was just absolutely enthralled, and I've been had to, the chance to listen to Doug play here for the last couple of days since he got in. Um, it's just amazing how this guy paints a picture with his music and creates such a vision, really like nobody I've seen. So, uh, love having him here. Um, get ready to be entertained. This is Doug Hammer.
Thank you. Uh, that is the uh, title track of my new album, relatively new, came out last uh, October, called Travels. And uh, it started out as a single CD project. Um, and I had a few songs when I had recorded Solace back in uh, 2006, 2007. And the songs that I had left over uh, were called the, um, no, not the Rotom, uh, Country Road, uh, one called uh, Main Morning, and another one which was called Paris City of Dreams, which later I got rid of the Paris and made it a little more general and just called it City of Dreams. And so I looked at these three songs that I had left over and I said, uh, you know, what, should, what should I do next? I thought, hey, how about travels? They're all, you know, in different places. So I started with that. And as the project grew, it turned into um, two CDs, which I decided I, had, I really wanted to release all of the material together. The first disc is called Travels. And it's a bunch of handcrafted songs. Some of the songs are like 23 years old, like Main Morning. The second disc is called Travel's Detour, and all of that was freshly written within the last year or year and a half. All improvisations, and for the most part, all one take, first take, and uh, so very, very completely different uh, uh, take on you know recording and, and composing. Uh, but it all worked together with the theme. And as I was working on this project, I realized that a lot of the songs had to do with time and not place. So, and I'm, I've always been very fascinated by time. So uh, that's a little, little background on, on travels. This next song is called The Place We Once Knew. And what it's about is Going back to a place, maybe where you grew up or one of your favorite places, and I find as I get older, I go back there and some things are familiar and some things are not familiar. So it's that feeling of visiting an old place that is strange and familiar all at the same time. So here we go. Thank you. 
this next song is my dad's favorite song. So, Dad, if you're watching, I'm playing this for you. There's a, a book. I have two boys. They're going to be uh, nine and seven next month. And we have a book called The Ghost Train. And it's about these three ghosts that inhabit this castle. And they're having a grand time scaring everybody. What happens over time is the castle goes into ruin. And then they get, they're like, well, there's no one left to scare. And let's go out. And, and this is on top of a mountain. And then in the valley is this amusement park. And there's this ride called The Ghost Train, which is has a you know cardboard you know skeletons and and basically no one's scared on the ride they go into the ride and they start scaring everyone all of a sudden the ride's real popular again and everything is good so what does that have to do with the castle <laughs> absolutely nothing but i thought i'd tell you the story anyway <laughs> because halloween's my favorite holiday so um because i th I've, I've been to England and France, I've seen a number of castles and a number in, that are just completely just in a state of ruin. And I just always think of, if I could go back in time, what would it be like to visit that castle in its heyday? If those crumbling walls could speak, if they could talk and tell me some of their stories. So I thought, let me musically tell one of the stories that I think may have happened there. So.
I'm going to play one more song here. Our family's very uh, tight-knit family. And uh, right now, my wife is in France. She's French, so she's in France right now. My two boys are in Maine, and I'm here. <laughs> so we're spread out all over the place. But next week, we're going to reconvene, and we'll be hanging out at a beach in Maine at the end of next week. And my parents, hi, Mom and Dad. You want to? Hi, hi. Um, they just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. So um, this next song is called Back in Your Arms. And so I dedicate it to my wife, my boys, and my parents.
Uh, that song is called uh, Melancholy Morning. And uh, the inspiration behind it was I was uh, planning on coming down right here and recording one morning. And I came down and I had everything set up and my day cleared. And I got to the piano and I was just all knuckles. I just felt like it wasn't my day. I couldn't play. I was not in record mode. It's just, well, that's one of the beauties of recording at home is if, if you aren't feeling it, you can just walk away. Well, I shut the equipment off and I just kind of decided to, you know, embrace the emotion. I was a little disappointed, you know, and I started doing that melancholy little melody. And then all of a sudden I started liking it and it became more optimistic. And it's just kind of an emotional ride. And, um, I came to this song, so it was actually a really productive session. Because by the end of that night, that song was done and recorded, and it was one of those little, little one day miracles, one one day blessings. It was awesome. So uh, we've got a guest performer tonight. You've, I'm sure many of you have seen her before. She's the woman behind the scenes. She's also a whispering solo piano artist. Um, she's hard at work right now, recording her second CD. We're making really good progress. Just got it going. Mm -hmm. So I'd like Amy Janelle to come up and play a song for us. <laughs> you all having a good time? Yes. Me too. I love this. I love sitting back there and being able to listen to all the music. Everybody here. So I have this, um, this niece, Haley, and I've talked about her a little bit before. You may have seen her picture on the fridge and her artwork that she mails me. <laughs> um, she's adorable. She she's just does these really cute things all the time. Like we had both um, stayed the night at my parents' house. And she was up before me. I'm a pretty slow riser. It takes me a while to like totally wake up and get up. And you know, little you know, young kids, they're just like, I'm awake, you know. <laughs> so she was up before me and she was knocking on the door and she's like, Amy, Auntie Amy, and I'm like, What's going on? You know, still. <laughs> and I see these little fingers slide down under the door and they're wiggly. Auntie Amy. <laughs> And then she starts singing these cute little songs. I can hear her laying on the floor and she's kicking her legs and it's so adorable. And I would wake up to this. I stayed there for a few nights and it was just so beautiful. And she's just so great. She's so full of joy and just passion for life and so innocent. And I find that really inspiring. And, um, and I think that's so neat. And it's, it's funny because I remember feeling that. And somehow it's once you you know, you have these ex life experiences, somehow the innocence changes and it's no longer innocent anymore. But I, I kind of feel like now that it can also be a choice to go back and feel that happiness as though you were innocent. So this song is for her and I call it Remembering Innocence.
Hi there. So we have a question from our internet audience, um, and this is from Buddy in Tennessee. He was asking me about the Naked Piano recordings and the concert hall where I, where I recorded it and the logistics of that. And um, it's a great question, Buddy. Um, so it was recorded in Steinert Hall, which is in Boston. It's a very old uh, concert hall that's two floors below ground level. So it's down in the basement. And it's a beautiful concert hall that was designed specifically for piano concerts. And at the turn of the century, last century, Rachmaninoff played there, Hoffman. It was really a true piano performance hall. And the stage itself is just big enough for a nine-foot Steinway grand piano. Well, in the early 1900s, there was a fire in Boston, the Coconut Grove Fire. And there were a lot of people that were killed. And that's when the fire codes in Boston changed. And you had to have two exits out of any public performance space. And they had to close down Steinert Hall. This was in the early 1900s. And if you go into Steinert Hall now, they've never done any work to it. It's just captured in time. Plaster walls, and it's crumbling plaster. And it's an amazing, amazing space. And I was fortunate because my first job was working for Steinert's. And the owners were generous enough to let me do my recordings there. And we had to load, it was a Steinway D, and uh, it's a big piano. It's a nine-foot piano. It weighs close to 1,000 1, pounds. And they loaded it onto this old freight elevator. And the, you know, as it was brought down, you can hear it kind of creaking <coughs> along as it got down there. And they moved it off the stage. And there was just enough room for the piano and for the bench on the stage. Um, and the stage has got, had gotten so old that they now had a piece of steel underneath the piano. I mean, a thick piece of, of steel so that the, the stage wouldn't collapse which made it difficult actually for the recording sessions because the sound was bouncing off the, um, the floor. But it's, it has an interesting sound. So if you listen to the Naked Piano One album especially, um, it captures a little bit of that, that space. And um, that's how we, we did the Naked Piano uh, recordings in Stein Hall. Uh, so this next piece I'm going to play is actually from the second album. And this piece, it's the first, um, first track on the second album. It's titled The Thinker. And for those of you that are into art, um, this is a piece, if you've ever seen the Rodin sculpture of the thinker, you know, he's sitting there like this. Uh, this piece is actually about inspiration and that moment of inspiration when you have an idea and it, that you get tingles on your spine. And it's like this energy that you don't know where it comes from, but you're inspired by something. And um, there's a lot of improv, but it leads up to this moment of inspiration. And I hope when I wrote it, it gave me tingles on my spine. And if I've done my job, I'm hoping that you, some of you may feel that. So. This is the thinker. Thank you. 
inspiration part, of course, is that big chord. Um, <laughs> um, the next piece, uh, this is a request. And also, I think um, I didn't want Doug to show me up because he dedicated a piece to his wife. And I believe my wife is watching, so I couldn't let this happen. Um, this next piece, it's titled Esposa. And my wife is Portuguese. And Esposa in Portuguese means spouse. Um, and it's obviously dedicated to my wife. But it's a piece about timeless love. And it's about that love that just doesn't change. Um, and it's, it's interesting. Doug and I have a lot, a lot of things in common. And he mentioned time. And I write this on one of my albums about um, I'm fascinated with time as well. But more um, finding things that don't change throughout your life. So things that kind of stay the same. And for me, that's been like nature and family and love. So those are a lot of the themes that I use in, in my music. And um, this one is about timeless love. And it's called Disposa. Can I do one more? Oh, okay, okay, short one. Um, this one is off the new album. I'm gonna keep it short. It's, um, the new album's gonna be titled Light and Dark, and I just wanna give you a taste of what's, I guess, coming. Um, and I'll jump right into it.
So I have the pleasure of introducing another guest whisperings artist. You're in for a treat. So you're getting all these guest artists tonight. This, is, um, this, this gentleman is just a fantastic, fantastic person. Very good friend of mine. Um, he, he's an amazing piano player. Joe Yamada, please. Thank you all very much. Uh, I'm just going to play uh, one short track. I thought I'd play something upbeat because the weather today was so nice. Uh, but it, it's a short, short track. Uh, also, kind of like the weather today is short-lived. You know, it was raining <laughs> yesterday. It's going to be raining tomorrow. So you've got to enjoy the, the nice weather while you have it. So I thought I'd play something upbeat. It's not one that I play very often, but it's one I like, and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So uh, this one's called Blind Heart. I'd like to play you something off my debut album from uh, Solace, and it's called Sunrise.
couple of years ago, I got an email from this woman, and uh, she was in the hospital because her baby boy had this rare kidney disease. And at like, I think four weeks, they had to remove both of his kidneys. And uh, he's doing fine now. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll tell you that bit of info right now. He's doing great. But at the time, it was very much touch and go. And he could have he could have gone any time. But he's, he was a strong little boy. And in the hospital room, they had the TV and all of the music choice channels. And on soundscapes... Uh, Sunrise, the song I just played for you, regularly play on it. And so she, she said, we love that song. I, you know, do you have the sheet music for it? And at the time I didn't, so I created the sheet music and, and gave it to her. And she said, we call that song Jonathan's song because, you know, we hear it all the time and, and he loves to hear it and so forth. And, and so... Anyways, one day I was walking my younger boy to school, which is just a couple blocks from our house, and on the way back, this melody popped into my head. And it it's, usually doesn't happen that way. It's pretty rare that uh, a melody will pop in my head away from the piano. So as I was walking, I'm like, okay, let me remember this. I went to my studio and started to get some ideas. And then I ended up writing Jonathan's song which is on travels, so I'd like to play it for you.
Uh, I forgot one part of the story. She gave up one of her kidneys, donated it to her son, and he's doing great. She sent me a picture once, once uh, Travels was done, I sent it to her, and she sent me a picture with him with the headphones on listening to it. He had a big smile on his face, so one day I hope to play it for him live. He, they live down in San Diego, so I'm hoping to get down to San Diego at, at some point. So I'd like to finish up with this one groove song. Some of the songs on Travels, besides just times and places, just have to do with movement. So it was very much my Yang album, while Solace is my Yin album. So.
Um, the next concert coming up um, is actually sold out, but we're talking about adding a second show, and that's David Lons with, Dave, with Lewis Landon. Um, David Lons is a, a legend um, amongst contemporary piano, and Lewis Landon is a composer improviser from New York City, and they're going to be touring together. So they're going to be playing here um, Saturday, August 24th, and we're thinking of adding another show that weekend. So check the Piano Haven website if that interests you. And the concert after that is kind of a special concert. It's a little something different. Um, uh, the lady that's going to be performing here is two ladies are actually all on tour from Australia coming through here. Um, and it's Fiona Joy Hawkins, mm -hmm. wonderful, renowned composer, worldwide composer, beautiful stuff. And she's going to be playing with Trisette, who's another Australian lady, and she's a singer-songwriter. So we're going to add a little, little vocals into the mix. It'll be a fun, different kind of concert. And that is going to be Saturday, September 15th. So we hope to see you guys here. If you're not here, you can always tune in and watch it online. We're not going anywhere. So to end it tonight, thank you. I know we ran a little late, but uh, these guys from Boston, um, I think we need to give them a big hand right now because they're awesome guys. <laughs> these guys traveled far, and you know, airfare these days is, is crazy, but they made the journey just to be here with us tonight. Um, and as like all the other artists that come through here, um, you know, it's not about the money. It's about sharing. It's about just playing music and enjoying and entertaining. Um, which is really what drives these guys. Um, it drives me and it drives everybody I know, you know. And that's our passion, just to share music, share what we have, share a little, a little piece of our heart. Um, and we love doing it this way. It's intimate. Um, it's fun. And this was the, the 50th, tonight was the 50th concert we've done here. Yeah. 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 Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to end it here with a little off-the-cuff improv um, as we normally do, and um, unrehearsed, I promise, to see what happens here.